Let's just get straight into this. Part 4 is finally out after the long wait. I hope you guys enjoy because I really tried to make this video the best it could be to celebrate the finale of this series. And also if you guys really want me to continue this just tell me in the comments and I might consider it. Make sure you guys have subscribed if you haven't already because we recently just hit 2000 subscribers thanks to all y'all and I really appreciate it. Without further ado let's just get straight into the video, enjoy. Day 76 and I was walking home from my village when I spotted a charged creeper. I haven't seen one of these in ages, bro. I, I completely forgot that they were actually in the game. I was pretty scared, but I wanted to approach it anyway. Cause I, I had good armor, and I think I was chilling. There were actually two creepers next to each other. I wanted the charged one to explode, because I'm pretty sure it makes a big explosion. And yeah, the normal creeper killed the charged creeper, so I didn't really see anything cool. I realized that I completely forgot about making an anvil, so I did that real quick, and I didn't really know where to put it. Looked around, and I decided to put it next to my enchantment area. I wanted to go finish up my villager house today, so that's exactly what I did. Enjoy this little time lapse of me finishing up the villager house. Getting a villager inside the house was kind of annoying because I had to trap one inside a minecart, but I did it eventually and now we have our very first villager inside our brand new house which is locked with gates. I got our second villager in pretty soon and I just started throwing food on the ground for them hoping that they would breed. I'm not really sure how this works, but yeah, I kind of just did what Wiki told me to do. I checked back on them the next day and it looks like they were doing something in there. Yeah, I'll just leave them to that. I also cleared out this little area for a campground that I was thinking about making. I saw it on YouTube and it looked really cool, so I wanted to make it right in this little cleared area over here. So I went down to go mine for some netherites because I completely forgot that this was even a thing. And after a little bit I found some and I was using the TNT exploding strategy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It looks like it worked pretty well. I only ended up finding two pieces of netherite while I was down in the underground nether. I also created like a little storage area next to my portal so I can store all this netherite that I was getting from exploding all of this stuff. So I went to go check up on the villagers and we finally had our baby villager. I don't really know what to turn him into first, maybe like another librarian, I'm not even sure. I was just messing around and just seeing what I could get and I got efficiency 4 literally on my second try. So that's pretty insane, I'm definitely gonna go lock that so I gotta go get some stuff to trade with him. So I ended up getting one Efficiency 4 Enchanted book. After a long days of hard work, I ended up getting a couple different books, three Efficiencies and two Mendings. Okay, this is stupid, but I didn't record this part, but pretty much I got a new diamond pickaxe and I enchanted it, and it was Efficiency 4 already on it, so that was super lucky. And yeah, I just applied Mending, and now I had a really good pickaxe. So I had to go check back on the villagers, and now they had two babies, so it's actually really good, and I didn't even know that was possible. Uh, that's pretty cool. So I had a comment telling me to get an Ocean Explorer map and explore one of those monuments, but I know those are pretty hard and I don't know if I was ready for them yet because I'm pretty bad at the game, so I ended up getting a Woodland Explorer map. Alright, well, um, it's been a couple days and I looked it up and I realized it was way too far and I didn't have an elytra yet, so I didn't really want to walk all the way over there. So I kind of just walked for like a day or two and then kind of wasted my time. So I went back into the end because I really wanted to get an elytra now because I wanted to go exploring and stuff. It would be so much easier with a pair of wings. Yeah, I collected up some chorus fruits. It was really satisfying. And yeah, pretty much I was just building paths and using ender pearls to just try to find an end city. It took a really long time and I added arrows on the ground to make sure I knew uh, how to get back. And this was probably one of the most boring parts, like, ever. But after a little while of exploring, I finally came across one. It was one right there, I used an end pearl to get a little bit closer. And I was pretty lucky, because there was a, like, one of those flying ships on my first one, so I got in a guaranteed elytra, I don't know how rare those are. Alright, and this is one of the reasons why this video took so long for me to get out. So pretty much what happened was, I don't know, I don't really know what happened, I think I clicked record, so I have a hockey for recording, and I, I think I clicked it by accident once, so pretty much, 
I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to explain is pretty much I didn't record all the good parts and then I ended up recording all the parts I didn't want to record so I just had a bunch of footage of just me like looking around and I didn't clip anything like finding the elytra I didn't clip finding all this like loot or anything and I was just so annoyed when I figured out that I just didn't record a single thing and yeah that kind of messed me up so I'm sorry but I don't have any footage for any of that and I don't I didn't really know what to do so that was pretty stupid Oh yeah, also it didn't record me going back into the portal. Right here, I'm setting my inventory up, and I was gonna, I was about to go back in the portal, and then I just, I clicked start, but it ended up ending it. So that's like kind of what happened. So right now it's just a black screen because I didn't record any of this. But yeah, at least now we have an elytra. So now we're back to normal recording. Hopefully, don't mess up anymore. So I went back and I saw an iron golem inside of my villager house. So I think this is a good sign. I'm not really sure. So, um, I wanted to make a slime farm, so I went on to over to chunkbase.com and found a slime chunk right next to my house, right in this area. And I thought this was a good spot to start building a slime farm. Oh, and if you guys are wondering how I made the chunk borders show, you just press F3 and G at the same time, and then you can see the chunk borders. So I went over to a nearby ocean to collect some kelp for the soul sand elevator I was going to be making to get up and down to the slime farm. And yeah, it was, really, it was a really satisfying sound, but also pretty loud. So now that I had my kelp and my soul sand, I went back down and I dug a little hole to around Y10. I don't really know how deep you have to make these. And I placed a soul sand there and I kind of forgot how to make a soul sand elevator. I think you're supposed to put like a normal block there that kelp can grow on first. Yeah, I kind of fixed it right there. I put a normal block and then I just have to put kelp all the way in, all the way to the very top so I could turn every block into a source water block. So then the soul sand elevator would actually work. If you guys want to learn how to make these, just look up how to make a soul sand elevator. They're pretty simple to make. And right when it's I finished it, people came around and just blew it up, so that was great. I had to go rebuild the side of my house. So I went back down and I broke all the kelp, replaced the cobble with a soul sand, and the water elevator works. Let's go. Maybe sometime I'll put stuff on the outside so it's not just stone that you have to look at. But yeah, that would be pretty cool. Boom. Bam. Bop. Bruh, for real though, where's FaZe at, dude? My aim is way too good for this game. Alright, next I just continued mining out a huge area in that chunk for where my slime farm was gonna be. I didn't really know what I was doing. I kinda just remembered how I made my slime farm from like 10 months ago. But I also came across some diamonds, which was pretty cool. I know I should've waited for fortune, but honestly, I kinda just was too lazy to do that. I just mined it up anyway. Yeah, it was 6 diamonds, and then I just continued mining. This was a pretty big moment in this world. I picked up some gunpowder and paper and I made my first set of fireworks. So I knew I was gonna have to get a creeper farm going so I could get some more fireworks, but right now I only had 48 with the leftover gunpowder that I had. Also, I realized that digging out that huge area for the slime farm was gonna take too long, so I wanted to make a beacon, but first I needed an iron farm. So to build that I had, I, I gathered up all these resources that you can kind of copy if you want to build this along with me. And I'm using Waddle's, um, I think it was 1.15 and above design and I think it works pretty well. Oh and I forgot to mention this but we are currently now in 1.16.1 because 1.16 just released so that is very epic. There is so much stuff I want to do in this video, I don't know if I'm going to go fit it all in within the 100 days. So if you guys really want me to continue this series, just let me know. The next step was I had to get a zombie that could pick up an item, and I finally found one that actually could pick up an item, so I had to keep that one safe. This was one of the most annoying things to do, but I had to get a zombie up all the way into the iron farm and make him fall inside of the hole. This took like, literally like 5 minutes, it shouldn't have taken that long. But yeah, eventually I finally got him inside there. Next up I needed to get 3 villagers inside of the farm. So I went inside of the house and trapped one of them. But literally, it just wouldn't let me leave. The Iron Golem was just sitting there blocking the exit, just looking at me like, Bro, let me leave. Let me get out of here. I need to take this villager out, bro. Like, this was literally so annoying. There was just way too many villagers in here. It was like an overpopulation. They were just all getting in the way. I, I couldn't, like, push them out or anything. This was just getting crazy. Eventually, it turns night and all the villagers kind of moved away. So I actually had room to push this guy out. One dude almost escaped. So this was my plan pretty much. I wanted to get him out here and then trap him inside a boat so that I could ride him all the way back over to my base. It was a really annoying process, but I think it, it should work. It should work pretty well. It'll just take a long time. I almost suffocated my villager like 10 times. How is he not dead, bro? I'm such a bad person. <laughs> but yeah, off I go. Over to the iron farm. 
This was also another really annoying part. I had to push the villager up using a rail, and he fell down like four times, so it was really annoying, but eventually I got him inside his little area. Took a while, but I got the last villager in. There we go, he just jumps right into his bed. I think I should be done now, this iron farm should be 100% working. There's actually one more thing that I forgot, which was putting in the water at the very top, like the spawning platform where the iron golems would spawn. But once I finish up that, everything should be good, and hopefully I will start earning some iron, which we can use in a lot of builds, and also part of the beacon. I'm not going to make the whole beacon out of iron, by the way. I'm going to put some emerald blocks in there too. I also got an Unbreaking 3 Librarian, which is pretty nice. And now since I had that, I could finally enchant my elytras with Unbreaking 3 and Mending, so now I had maxed out elytras. The next day I went to go buy some armor from the Armor 2.0 because my first one actually died. And I wanted to buy these so I can combine them and try to make like some actually good armor since my armor was breaking. So I combined the boots and got Protection 3. And then I enchanted some books, and then I actually got some good stuff for my sword. There was a fire aspect 2, loyalty 3, quick charge 1, but I was only going to be using the fire aspect, and it had a sweeping edge 3, so I was going to combine those all into my sword. Nice. I also went and grabbed my boots again, and I forgot that I didn't combine them all the way. So I combined the two protection 2s to make a protection 3, then combined that protection 3 with another one and got protection 4 and depth strider 1. And the final thing I did was add mending to my boots. So I went down to go check on the slimes and there was actually some slimes in here. I wanted to use the slime for a little thing I was going to work on for the final 100th day. It was going to be a surprise so you guys better stick around through the whole video to see what that surprise is. And I also had to go in the nether to grab some quartz for the thing I was building on the final day as well. I think I came out with a good amount of quartz for this project. So over here, I built like a Oh my god, bro, I haven't seen these guys in a long time. Are these like phantoms? I'm pretty sure they come if you don't sleep in like every like three days or something. Something like that. Guess I gotta go back. Alright, well anyway, as I was saying, I built this little path over here. That connects over to our little slime farm area. And then if you go this way... There's a little house over here with just a mysterious little button. So if you stand on this block and hit that button, you drop down into a secret little chamber, which is going to be my trophy room area. I had this comment actually suggest me make a trophy room, so yeah, thanks to you, I built that, and it looks pretty cool. I'm going to be adding some cool things in there as we go on. The last days I just spent working on the little trophy room slash museum room, and I think it was actually turning out real nice. There was lots of resource gathering, and just grind involved in this. Wow, it is actually day 100. We made it all the way through. At the very beginning of the series, I didn't think I was actually going to survive all the way through day 100. I'm going to take a bite out of my victory cake. I think we made that on day 50. I actually don't remember. But yeah, I can't believe we've gone this far. We built this cool little fountain. I think this was on like somewhere near day 40. I really don't remember any of this. It's been a while, and this series has been tons of fun making. We have our little farm underneath our little house. And over here, we have our trophy room. When you drop down, you can see that I did a little bit of extra work. I added some, like, lava pillars on the side, and I think that looked pretty nice. But most importantly, the dragon egg, our first little treasure slash monument kind of thing. It, this place looks really ugly right now, to be honest, but, like, I don't know. It's gonna get better once I keep on building it. I just don't have enough resources right now. Oh, I just accidentally hit that thing when I was eating my steak. Well, yeah, um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this series. I had a ton of fun making it. And if you guys really want me to continue this, just let me know in the comments down below. I need to see tons of support, though, because this video probably took me the longest out of the other three episodes to make. This video took a really long time. There's just so much building and stuff to do. Well, anyways, if you guys want me to continue this, just tell me in the comments, like I said. And I hope you guys have an epic day. I'll see you guys next time.